they just don't, don't stock any 20 millimeter length canvas at all. Um, so you could basically just cut cut the longest band off the length if you wanted to, or you could just fix, fix your camera a different way instead of using all these plates and save some weight. Well, it's just two of them, of course. Uh, anyway, so this frame being the first one I built, and the second one wasn't actually really planned at the time that I ordered this. Uh, the second one ended up being cheapy parts that was using the racer star because I sort of wanted to save a bit of money on that one because I wasn't actually planning to build it. Um, so this one is going to be the non cheapy parts. And the non cheapy parts are going to be this. This is a hobby wing Xroder 2205 2200 KV motor. And these are not particularly cheap. I think this is about $17 or so. It's a strange, strange, very, very strange design on the bottom here. See how this sort of, right next to the hole, it sort of goes, it bows inward and makes it very narrow there? And it's not symmetrical either. I really don't know why they've done that. It's kind of strange. Um, hopefully these motors will be quite nice. I'm a big fan of Hobbywind stuff. I don't like to be a groupie when it comes to brand names. I just sort of try and find something that works and use it. But every now and then a brand comes along where everything I've used from them that they make has just worked really, really well. And for me, with mini quads and quad copters, Hobbywind so far has, has been one of those brands where everything just works. Having said that though, all I've used with their product is ESC. That's all I've used. Um, speaking of which, ESCs I'm going to use are uh, these ones. So Hobbywing has made um, quite a few larger ESCs in the past, and they're just starting to come out with these smaller ones to get, on, get in on the um, the what well, that uh, the little B kind of market with these small ESCs for mini quads. Uh, so I'm hoping that these will perform as well as the larger ESCs of theirs that I've had so far do. And they perform very well. This is not the BLHS one, by the way. This is just a um, uh, S396 CPU. Probably can't read it there, but S396. Um, so yeah, yeah, I'm hoping that'll go very well. It's very, very small, isn't it? Very small. Probably the smallest ESC that I've had so far. It's even smaller than the Razor Star ones. Uh, so yeah, not particularly a cheapy build, this one. But these two parts are going to be different to the other quad that I just built. Looks like everything's going to be black on this one, pretty much. And all the rest of the stuff is the same. I'm going to use another one of these really neat uh, PDBs that I quite like. It has a 5 volt and 12 volt uh, sit down there. And it's only about 4 millimeters high at the highest part, so it's quite nice to put underneath your flight controller. Goes on there. Like and flight controller is going to be this one. It's a another 32 revision 6B. And I think the B means that the, um, what is it, the USB power and the power that's on these 5 volt line on these rails there and there. Oh, there's it there. And the second one there is 5 volts. And that rail is separated from the USB 5 volts. Um, that's the only difference between the revision 6 and revision 6B. I'm not totally sure. Um, but this is one with no compass or barrow, just the basic one. Um, fairly cheap. These are about $15 now, which is really nice because when you're building a mini quad, you don't need a compass or barrow, so you don't have to pay extra for that stuff. I mean, uh, acro sort of racing for the mini quad. Um, and for the receiver, I'm going to use the Flight Guide uh, ia 7 b as usual. Camera is going to be this Runcam OWL for the time being. I have another camera that I was um, provided with by Runcam to do some side-by-side -side testing on and um, still sort of getting that underway at the moment. And then I will switch that camera into the deferment camera for this frame. Right. I think that's about all I have to say. Now let's get building it. Oh, I just realized there are only seven standoffs in the kit, which is not really a problem because I have these other ones that I got from Bamboo earlier, um, 30 millimeter standoffs. So I could put this one on on there to make up the last one. But I know I just said I'm a functionality oriented guy that doesn't worry about how things look, but oh, I just can't bring myself to do this. <laughs> so I'm gonna replace I'm gonna make them all red like that. So it's not gonna be an all black quad after all, it's gonna be a little bit red. Looks like this is this in here just perfectly. I was a little bit worried about that because it's one of the more tricky things to visualize when you're just looking at a two D diagram in the CAD program and you have to keep in mind that you're gonna have to have space for the tabs to swap in and then you need room for the pockets. And you need room for the screw to go in, so it's gonna have to be three millimeters in diameter clearance, and then it's gonna have to go in far enough to hold solidly, and then you need uh, a little kind of damage pocket. You need space for enough to go in, but not too much. So if you want to, hopefully, you want to be able to just turn the screw from the bottom without having to hold the nut, which would be ideal, which is how it turned out, I can turn this. Uh, it manages to hold itself in place while I'm turning it fairly well. Just a little bit of play there, that's right. And then finally, you need to also keep in mind that it needs to be physically possible for the CNC machine to cut it, which is why we have these two little roundy bits on the outside, so that I, I wanted this to be able to be cut with a 2mm end mill, and that turned out right as well. So I'm quite pleased about that. Everything's working pretty well. 
anything that's not really perfectly ideal is that the top of the screw doesn't really come through into the nylon part of the lock nut very much. It is coming through, it's just sort of flush with the edge of the top of the nut, but it would be nice if it came through a little bit further, maybe another half millimetre. But these were about the only screws that were close enough to that, um, that length that were available from the Amazon site, so that's going to have to do it, I think. There's something a little bit strange going on with the solder pads on these ESCs. I've found that your ESCs in the past, I'm easily able to just put an extra bit of solder on here, like this, but I don't know what's on these little tabs here, but it seems like like Teflon or something, I just can't get any solder to stick on there. But after 25 minutes or so messing around like that, I decided to just try sticking the wire onto it, and it worked quite nicely. It doesn't look like a very nice, smooth joint, but it's very solid. So I don't know what's going on with this. Looks like there may be a little bit of solder on them already, but I can't figure out why I can't add any more solder onto it. Oh, I guess it, it looks like it's going to work okay, though. I just realized that I have quite a few of these uh, straight connector extensions, but I don't have any of the 90 degree ones, which I would rather use. So this is going to go in there. If it was 90 degrees, then it would lie nicely against the interconnected video transmitter there. Um, so for this one, temporarily, I think I will make a little aluminium angle mount to have this coming out here like that, like I mentioned in my last build. That was one of my ideas that I was going to try. So I think I'll, I think I'll try that, but I probably won't end up using it permanently. It'll just be for the time being. And in case it wasn't clear what I meant by that, this is the piece here, the, the 45 degree or so bent a piece of aluminium angle with those holes drilled as appropriate and it's going to go on the top. I suppose it's supposed to go on the bottom but I'm going to put it on the top and I have to grind away a little bit of this edge side here as well to help it fit in. Um, so it's not really the ideal solution because it also, when you put that on there and this through there, it also means that this is going to now be a couple of centimetres further that direction so the video transmitter is going to be sort of under here and it's not going to be quite so easy to access the switches on the side of it. So um, it's kind of a bummer. So when I get some 90 degree versions of these extension cables, I'll just replace it and use the, the holes in the top there. I think it's been working quite well on the other quad. Well, there it is. It's 382 grams, which is a little bit on the heavy side, but um, it should still fly for chaos. So I didn't really have any issues or anything strange or unusual to report. Um, I'm leaving the DSCs with the Heli 14.4, which is what they came with. Um, and once again, I used the clean flight pass-through facility to reverse the motors. And I changed also the min throttle and max throttle settings for them as well, just to match my other quad. And I copied all my beta flight settings from the other quad as well. It should be fairly safe to do that. Uh, the only thing I've changed is that this one's going to have beta flight 3.0 on it and this is 2.8.1 or whatever the other one had. Um, so, it's actually not raining at the moment. So I might take this just for a little, quick little line of flight test flight and see how it goes. I just put the, the ESCs with some uh, electrical tape. I think that'll be all right. Oh, nice. So you can copy your settings from one to the other and it all works. Oh, the other thing I changed was I'm using one shot 125 now instead of normal PWM. Oh, I can hear it adjusting the speed of the motors more. 